All right. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate your time. I appreciate you also putting investing the to kind of acquire the business, your fashion business, and also get funding for it. You know, people typically would tell me that, oh my God, there's so much unemployment in Africa. Uh, the question that I have is to work in Deloitte. Everybody wants to work in Microsoft, in Google, none of these big companies. But once they get one they, once they reach capacity and they're unable to hire, what happens? Who start, who starts hiring people? How do we expect unemployment to reduce at that point? That is why we need to, I'm not saying that everybody should be an entrepreneur, but we need to build organizations. We need to build businesses that have structure and have the right, you know, resources to become employers of labor. And that is why DEA exists. But today we are doing a webinar called Entitled Starting and Funding a Fashion Business in Nigeria. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Olua Sheitoa Ojobi. I am the founder of Developing Africa, which I already told you a little bit about what we are about um today we are going to we have our phenomenal speakers sarah kazim and adeja kelasisi i mean these are phenomenal people i can't emphasize how amazing they are how much experience they have in having the fashion industry in getting grants is adeja okay it's like totally mama <laughs> she has gotten so much grants in her journey as an entrepreneur and it's so amazing sarah kazim is also a recipient of it to look Ah, oh, gosh, she's, she's so good. I can't even pronounce it. She, go see, uh, she's also a recipient of the Tolu Illumilu grants. Um, she has the brand Sarah Kazim, and she's doing really amazing stuff. And they'll be teaching you today all that, you know, you need to know about the fashion industry. Whatever you hear today, I promise you, it's not applicable to just the fashion industry. It's applicable to all the industries, whether you are a shoemaker or whatever it is you're doing, it's applicable there. But as we're in this session, you might hear something, one thing or the other. These are hashtags that you can leverage so that we can kind of repost it and share it across board or share it on our platforms. If you have any questions, even as we are going, please put them in the chat window and we would address them as we go. We will start with Sarah. So let me tell you how this is going to start or how this is going to go. We'll start with the first session, which is how to start a fashion brand. And then we go into um where Sarah Kazim is going to tell us all about that and then we go into introducing Ms. Jokia Adel um, Lassisi and then we talk about getting funding in between the sessions we're going to take questions we're going to answer some pre-asked questions we're also going to take questions from you guys um and then this webinar in total will be available on our website for you to go back and rewatch. we'll also be sharing the slides with you please let us know if you have any questions in the chat window and we will address it as we go. There's a lot that Sarah Kazim has done, so I'm not going to read this out to you. Like I said, we're going to share the slides with you, and I'm just going to hand it over to Sarah Kazim to start our session. Hey guys, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Eito, for having me. Thank you, thank you so much. You're such an amazing woman, and I really want to thank you. Guys, you don't know, Sheito was one of the, like, she, not even one of, Sheito was the first person that, like, officially invited me to my first official, <laughs> like, serious event to speak. Like, she really trusted me so much and invited me to speak in 2018. So, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, and I want to say thank you also to Joke, thank you for being here, and also Yinka, and every other person that is here. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that you have like so much to gain from these few minutes I'm going to be sharing. My name is Sarah Kasim. I'm a pattern maker and creative director for the Sarah Kasim brand, and also the Sarah Kasim Nigeria brand, which is a ready-to-wear aspect of the Sarah Kasim brand. Also, the up lead for the Tonyoli Foundation, Lagos State. So let's get right into it right now. Today, I'll be talking about a fashion and building a fashion brand in Lagos, Nigeria. So if you can see from, from this slide, think um, global fashion industry, what's the words of global fashion industry? The global apparel market is projected to grow in value from 1.3 trillion US dollars in 2015 to about 1.5 trillion dollars in 2020, showing that the demand for clothing and shoe is on the rise across the world. What's this saying? It's saying that the fashion industry is very lucrative. 
yes, it is very lucrative. In as much as it, it's lucrative, there's all, there are also issues there. So I'm just I'm just letting us in on the numbers so that we can see how lucrative it is and how easy it is for you to break even. So we can move on to the next slide. If you read, if you read continually, say the global fashion industry is worth over 2.5 trillion, with Africa's share estimated at less than one percent of that total. Meanwhile, the monitor suggests that the sub-African sub Aharan fashion market is worth $31 billion, with Nigeria accounting for 15% of that. So as you can see that the fashion in Africa is really growing. So it's something that if like, any one of you that is willing to move into the fashion industry, something that's lucrative and know that, oh, this is something that in the long run you're going to make money from. Then the next question I want to, the first question I'm going to ask you today is why are you choosing to do this? Why do you want to launch a fashion brand? A lot of times I hear people, I have students who come to me and say, oh, I want to learn fashion. And next thing when I'm asking them this question is either maybe their mom say, oh, you're going to learn fashion. Why? Because I want you to make clothes for me. I, or your sister is saying, ah, you should learn fashion. That's what is trending now because I would like to wear dresses from you. Or maybe your friends, you see your friends doing it and then you're like, oh, I want to do this because that's what is trending. Why I'm asking this question is because in as much as we all have dreams and we have aspirations that we want to do, you al always have to remember whatever it is that you want to go into, even if you want to make money, I always advise that you have a passion for whatever it is. Even if it's, you're trying to mend shoes, you're trying to be a chef, as long as you have passion for these things, it's easier for you to move, it's easier for you to grow, it's easier for you to keep moving on in case with the trials, in case you're sad, in case things happen, you always remember the reason why you started. So today you have to ask yourself, why are you choosing to do this? Are you doing this for yourself? Are you doing this because you have the passion for it? Or you're doing this because somebody to so ask yourself that. Then on the next slide, we have, okay, ask yourself this. What do people need right now? What do you get that by doing? What do people need right now? You can get that by doing a survey. Who are these people? What can I create to meet their need? So if you see this question, you're supposed to be asking this question the way it's been asked here, like exactly the same step. You don't ask number three. You don't try to do number three first. So the first thing is, what do people need right now? So for instance, I'm always very weary of people who are trying to do everything together. So you say, what do people need right now? Maybe you're working in an office and you notice that your colleague, they're always complaining about, oh, they really like beautiful and fancy corporate dresses, but the ones that they always find is either they're so ex expensive or there's just something wrong about them. That's a problem right there for you to solve. So you don't have to like, oh, I want to do fashion, but I don't know what to do. Sometimes you just have to put your ears to the ground and listen to what people around you are complaining about so if you're in the in the university and people are always complaining about oh they really want fancy dresses they can wear to classes nice cheap dresses and easy to wear dresses so that's a market there listen to what people need right now and get that and even if people are not listening you can always ask questions how can you ask questions by doing and conducting a survey there are different tools to use to do this so conduct a survey ask your friends ask people around you what is the exact thing that they're looking for now who are these people you're trying to identify your target audience. How do you get your target audience? Those people that they are complaining about what they need right now, those are the people that you are targeting. So, for example, you are trying to, maybe you say, oh, if you have, finally you did a survey and you have seen that, oh, you want to start making clothes for people that are women that are pregnant, like maternity wears. Your target audience, you don't have to go anywhere else. Instead, you're supposed to go to where you know that you see them at Atinatal, in the clinics, in hospitals. That's where you always see them in large numbers. It's easier for you to conduct survey and find these people where you see them in large numbers than in minimal numbers. Do you understand? Maybe church groups, children groups and all those things so who are these people you have to identify them and how can you identify them is when you're speaking their language you'll be able to identify them because if you're saying you're doing maternity the way you can identify somebody that may be pregnant or somebody that's just that does give birth then what can i create to meet in so for example you finally found who your target audience are now that you know that it's pregnant women that you want to now make clothes for, you cannot now say you want to make clothes and then you're now making clothes that are so constricted. You can't move, you can't breathe, you can Yes, there are stylish moms, there are stylish pregnant women that will love this, which is amazing. But so you have to also remember that in as much as they want to be stylish, on most days, they actually want to be very, very, very comfortable. So whatever you are creating, you have to always put comfort in mind. So the next slide is saying, 
So the next step, people before products. A lot of times I see, I had uh, last month, somebody reached out to me and she was like, oh, she made ready to wear and she just did a lot of things and people are not buying. And then I asked her, I said, before you made this outfit, did you ask people what they wanted? A lot of times because you like a dress and you imagine this dress in your body and like, oh, it should look good. Automatically, you just assume that, oh, people are going to buy it. That is so fine. Even with me, it happens to the best of us. For my Sarah Kassim Nigerian brand, I always ask, I always do like a survey first. Even if I'm trying to create, I create in small quantity so that just in case, because you'll be shocked that that one that you're saying is ugly, that's the one people are asking for the most. That one that you're saying is pretty, that's the one people are not even going to buy. So you're not the one that's going to wear these clothes. So don't just sit down and assume that they, this is what they would like. So people before products, ask these people. Then the next thing is, what field in fashion do you want to go to? A lot of times I've seen all of us in Nigeria, myself, I'm guilty. We don't just ask questions, we don't check, we don't do anything. We just say, oh, I want to be a fashion designer. Without knowing that there's so many fields in fashion design. We have fashion stylists, we have fashion illustrator, we have pattern making, we have fashion retailing, we have PR, fashion photography, so many options. But I don't know, I think there's a misconception that if you don't have a fashion brand, if you're not the owner of the brand, or if you're not the one that is the fashion designer, people don't take you seriously. I don't know if that's true, or I don't know if that's what is happening, but I really think that you should sit down and ask yourself, what do you want to do in this fashion business? You don't have to be a fashion designer before you know that you are in fashion. So sit, do surveys, ask questions, research. What do you like? You can like pictures. And how can you make yourself into put yourself into fashion? Fashion photography, you can like drawing, you can be a fashion illustrator. So sit down, ask yourself what is in fashion that you actually really like, and make sure that you branch into that thing. Then once you have decided on which, learn the knowledge of the process. Guys, this is one of the mantras that I live by. In as much as I always say, oh, uh, you can always employ people, you can always do this and do that, it's always easier and safer to actually understand the market of what you're going into. Don't just go into anything like, oh, I don't care, I'll get people to work for me. It's always easier to understand a lot of the process. Make sure that even if it's a crash course on entrepreneurship, starting a business, so that you can understand how admin, especially if you're not coming from a corporate world, how admin is structured, customer service, relationship, accounting. It just helps you put structure in your business so that you're not just another fashion designer or another tailor or another another person. Do you understand? You should be the fashion designer. You should be the tailor. Do you understand? So that it's separating. So even if it's a one month crash course, please, I would advise that you take it. Then the next thing I always advise is pick your brand name. Because in as much as the brand is new, I always advise that you put structure. Put structure earlier on in the process so that you don't regret it and so that everything is not scattered. Pick your brand name. And guys, when you're picking a brand name, please don't pick Awojobi Oliwa Sheriton Serakasim Couture and Bridal Services. That's too long. If I'm your target audience, I can never remember you. When I need to use your service, I will not. That's how you, I hear people say, oh, how do you sell on Instagram? I don't sell. People are not buying. And then I look at your bio. I'm like, this is why you're not selling. Like, really? You will see Sarah Kassim, something, something, high-rise fashion culture and bridal. And I'm like, what? Or they will be underscore, full stop, comma, hyphen. Why? Are you trying to confuse me or are you trying to sell market to me? So make sure that the brand name is as simple as possible. Save yourself and your target audience because your target audience, they don't know who you are. They don't, so you cannot be stressing them with names. They will forget. Do you understand? So make sure that it's as simple as possible when you're picking. Then the next thing, select the social media your target audience are on. So for example, if your target audience are young, vibrant women that are investing, where will you find them? Most times you'll find them on social media like Instagram, visuals, TikTok, Twitter. You might not necessarily find them on Facebook because maybe they're elderly people. Do you understand? So you know that if I get, the target audience are young people, if the target audience are maybe pregnant women, married women, you can still find them on Instagram and Facebook. Do you understand? If the target audience are men, vibrant men that like football, you can mostly find them on Instagram and Twitter. So you have to sit down, research, and ask Google, where can I find these kind of people? Do you understand? Then the next thing, go on CSC website, find your name and register it. A lot of times people will say, oh, I just started, I don't need to register it. Guys, this thing is just 10,500 Naira. People take you seriously when they say that it's structure in your business. So go to the CSC website, search for your name. Even if you don't have, I think you can, you can hold the name for like one month. 10,500 Naira, if you sit down and say, I want to do it, you do it. That's like the price of a, a pair of shoe, if we're being honest. And I know that if you want to buy shoe or you want to make braids now, now, the money will come out. So guys, do this thing. Go on CSC website, find your name and register it. Yes, you might have restrictions. You still can't get the lawyer, but you can register the process when you want to go and get it that you now have to find all the people and the legal practitioners. 
Then the next thing, if possible, I recommend you open a business account as soon as possible. Guys, it's always very nice if I want to shop from you or make a dress from you, and then I ask you for your business account, and you give me a wajobi oluwa sheito, and maybe your fashion brand is stylish, baby. I just think, ah, you're using, you're, you're, you're using your personal account. I might not say it to you, but it just shows a level of seriousness. That to me, that's what I would just think. I'm like, oh, this person is not even serious. I will not say it to you, but I will just know that back of my head. And then it's not even like I will not be. There's no security. What if I don't really know you? It will be. I'll be scared to even pay to your personal account. Like, what if you don't need my money? Because I don't know you. But when you, your name is your personal brand is Stylish Couture, and you send me your account, Stylish Couture, I say, ah, ah this business is ready. Because for you to be able to have a business name with that, in um, a, 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 a bank account with that, it means that you already registered the business. So at least to a certain level, I'm secured knowing that I can get, I, I'm secured knowing that I can get that, I can get, I you cannot run away with my money, even if you run away, but I know that, oh, this thing is secured. Then the next thing I always say is production. Ask yourself, do you want to sort out production, giving production out, or do you want to supervise it? Both of them, they have their advantages and their disadvantages. And I'll tell you one one. So advantages of supervising yourself, you can see how the fit, finishing, the fit, you can see everything because they are under your nose. You can guide them. This is what I want, this is what I need done, and this one done. But the disadvantage of that is the overhead cost are going to be bearing that. So whatever cost, overhead cost of running the business is going to be on you. Then for outsourcing, for the outsourcing, you know that all oh, they will test, they will show, you never see until it's finished, or maybe in some cases that they will allow you to see the first stage and be able to. Then the advantage of that is no overhead cost. You're not paying anything, never rent, none of your business. You just can't pick up. So ask yourself, research, what do you want to do? Do you want to bear to put the brand under you or do you want to outsource it? But then the advantage of also outsourcing is that they always have minimum order quantities. So if you're just starting out, it's not something that I advise you to do because you know, the volume might be a lot. And the final thing that I always say is, after asking yourself all these questions and doing all these things, just launch. I understand that you have fears. I understand that you're worried. I understand that you are anxious. I understand that so many things are going through your mind. Oh, what if I fail? What if it doesn't go as planned? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And what if you lose? But what if you win? You will never know if you don't try. You will never know if you don't launch. So at least take it a day, like one step after one step. Start it, launch it, send it to your friends, show them, send your Instagram page. Show ah, I said the fashion. See, if it's in your church, stand outside. Any woman that passed, I said the fashion brand though. Can you check me out? Oh, I did this one. And because you're just starting out, your overhead cost will be smaller. So your price will still be cheaper. You can say, I just try me out. I'll give you two for the price of one. Just try to market yourself. People will say, Oh, you're too much. You're doing too much. You're out there. All those kind of people say, I think she doesn't believe them. But anybody is telling you you're out there, you're too much. Is that some kind of person that you need around you? Because somebody like me, my energy is so much. I'm so hyper. I'm so positive. So when I see that you're always complaining, I block you, I mute you, I tell you, I'll tell you though, but I know that I'm going to be very weary. We are very weary around you because before you know it, jealousy, envy, that's how it starts and that's how it breathes, to be honest. So guys, just launch. You never know if it like if it fails. You never know if you scale. You're always scared about only the bad things. But at the end of the day, ask yourself, what if you scale? What if it actually turns out well? And then, guys, we've come to the end of this section on launching a fashion brand. I hope that even if as I try to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it together so that I don't take so much time. I hope this time today here, you'll be able to use it for to launch your fashion. And I hope to see you at the top. So if you have any questions, anything whatsoever, you can reach out. You can ask your questions here, or you can reach out to Shayton. And also you can reach out to me on all my social media handles. They are right on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a lot of my equine. Um, thank you so much. So we we'll just go right into the questions that we had, um, the pre ex questions. So, and this is open to both Adija Kelasisi and Ms. Sarah, Sarah Kazim. Um, so how do I start after I'm in the necessary training? I mean, I know Sarah Kazim talked about just launching, but what are the steps? I guess that's what this person is saying. What are the steps to start after getting all the necessary training? So the steps to start after getting the necessary training is actually just starting because you've already gone for training and I'm sure that in the training, they're already teaching you. I feel like what's actually holding you back right now is fear of maybe they wouldn't buy it. But then we have to be comfortable in the fact that if they don't buy it, and so if they don't buy it the first time, just keep talking about it. Just keep 
things are going to happen you will never know so the step is just after you have gone for training just start if it's, you have money to buy a machine no matter how small or you don't have money to buy a machine if you have a tailor on your street that has a machine you can oh can i be using your machine i'll be paying you a particular commission so there's no excuse if you know, your excuse you don't have machine there's no excuse really because if you go on social media now there are people who have places that you can come and sew throughout the day and pay maybe one thousand or two k they have the irons pressing board everything so whatever it is that you need you don't have to have your own machine they have it so they offer their services so just start what kind what branch of fashion do you want to go into do you want to go to ready to wear is it couture is it bespoke is it male is it female i'm always very weary of people that are trying to do everything school uniform you are there um ready to wear you are there wedding dress you are there student dress you are there anything they will find you there you never even need to that's why you're not growing because you're trying to do everything so guys narrow down pick also if it's ready to what you want to do do it and do it excellently well like pick it and kill it that when people say oh i want to get ready to wear in this lagos nigeria they'll say go to seracassin ah I, I want to get some go to sheiton i don't know about you know that thing no but you see skirt this sheiton touches skirt for you she has killed it do you understand you want that effect on people that's what you want so just start after you have trained start even if it's one one dress you are sewing start reach out to your friend if you have a friend that has a very fine body so one style for her let that way to church ask for an honest feedback don't be somebody telling you oh, this thing is not fine you are fighting you are keeping grudge you are angry no you don't need that let them tell you oh this because they're your friends i don't know, tell you the truth yeah i know that sometimes some people are very wicked and mean and they are jealous they will lie they will now make it bad do you understand so but you can ask two people oh i made this dress oh how is it oh you said be your own person dress to church when people ask you, ah, I made it though. My name is Sarah Kasim. You check me out. Do you understand? That way you're engaging. So just start. That's the honest thing. Just start. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know. This question. Uh, can my business make you big in the northern part of Nigeria? Kind of for the kind of to be precise. I guess the answer to that is yes. But if you want to please shed more light on that. And also, how long does it take to break even in the fashion industry? So, yes, your business can make it big in another part of Nigeria. But then that's why I said that you have to understand your target audience. When you're in the north, you're not going to be sewing tube styles. You're not going to be sewing mono strap. You're not going to be, do you understand? You're going to be sewing things that are conservative. Maybe in some parts, they can allow you wear all those things. But if you're trying to grab a huge percent of the market share, you have to understand the audience there. What do they like? They like uh, maybe Kaba and Kara, skirt and blouse, up and down, all those things, mixing fabric, mixing net, making style. All of those kind of really like stylish clothes. So you have to understand that whatever you're making is bespoke, with your, if it's even is ready to wear. You know that these things are covered, high quality material and beautiful so if you want to make it big in another part is yes it's possible too but you also have to understand your target audience so if it's that you're going to be going to a muslim you're going to be going to the mosque on fridays advertising yourself because at the beginning you're going to be your biggest cheerleader so ah you're advertising don't be giving cards oh that cat thing don't don't do that only talk wear fine clothes let people wear clothes that will stop you on the road and be like ah ah who is your tailor i need to meet her then you know, we see a very a conversation has started me when i go to a place i know i will not be comfortable i just wear a pretty dress because i know that women and clothes they're like this so when the clothes is fine i know that every half of it, my talking is so when i know when i sit down as i enter people are already eyeing me after the meeting networking time somebody will come and talk to me i know and it always works so do you understand? Make sure that you understand your audience. Wear dresses that are beautiful when you are going out. So when people see you, like, I think this is fine. I need to meet your tailor. You say, I don't worry, not to bother. I am the tailor. I'm nice to meet you. And you guys exchange conversation. Then the other one, you say, how long does it take to break even in the fashion industry? Guys, like I always say, everybody, your own journey is different. Some people will enter the industry three months, they've broken. Six months, nine months, one year. Some people, two years. Some people, three. Some people, 10 years. Some people, 20 years. Somebody in me, I always say that I don't, I'm not, I'm not a proud person, but I like to see myself as confident. I tell people, if somebody took 10 years to do that thing, me and the person, our name is not tied together. I did not come to line up behind people. I came to start my own line. That's the honest truth. So if you took 10 years to start it, I can leverage on your experience. Maybe you're selling an online course, you're doing something, buy your uh, your book or whatever course you are selling and leverage on whatever it is you are teaching and build my own and make it easier. That's how I always advise people to do these things. So what, so that if you use 10 years, I can use two. 
you are walking so that I can fly. Me, I'm flying so that the person that is coming behind me is going to space or wherever the person is going to be going to. So technology has made things easier. So whatever it is that you're doing, you can break even. If you have sense, you know your numbers. That's very important. You know your numbers. Your accounting game is okay. Do you understand? It's easier for you to break even. But it's when you are reckless with money, you are always taking from the business money, any small thing, you are buying shower, ma, buying pizza, buying all those things, wasting the money and everything. That's when it's always hard, to be honest. But it's easy. Fashion business is profitable. I'm telling you, it is. But you have to be someone that you can manage. You're not just wasting resources because you are seeing them. You're not account. Nobody's accounting. Maybe your tailor suit. They'll buy hundred zip. You can't account for it. Buy fabric. Can't account for it. So make sure that there's even if it's small structure, mouse structure, accountability, and your numbers. Know your numbers. I know it's killing too. Speaking of yeah. this will be the last two questions. I believe we've answered most of them. Um, how do you build a structure for for business and create a strong business presence then if you can also yourself and miss lassisi if you can also answer this are there opportunities or exhibition arenas where one can display our work for public recognition okay how do you build your structure for business and strong business presence so that business presence is it offline or online so there are two different things so but to build business structure i used to say that people just make these things hard to build business structure is easy for example I may start. I just started my fashion brand right now. Okay, how do I be a business doctor? Maybe I'm working from home. The first thing I know I need to do. I've already had my business ten thousand five. I've opened a business account. So that structure, you see, two structures already in place. When I send him money, nobody sending money to my personal account. Sending my business account. My business is registered. So any opportunities that I find, they will always ask you the business registered. Imagine if you keep saying no. That's why sometimes you lose out on opportunities because they will see that, oh, you're not even registered, so you're not even genuine or authentic. There's no how they can even verify you. So the next thing is, if it's possible to get a fo another phone, a small phone or something, so that you know that anytime somebody's reaching out to you, it's only that number they can reach out to. It's only that number they can call you and send you. So if you say, oh, I want to be online 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., any customer that's messaging me after that time, you'll be able to say no, even if person offering you money. Because why? You don't want people to think that, oh, they can message you at 8 p.m. in the night, 10 p.m. in the night. You can do that. It's not a bad thing. But I'm saying for how long? And customers are funny. If you, if you start what you can't finish, they will not stop. Because they'll be like, ah, she used to do it. Why do you want to stop now? What's going on? I don't understand. Now you are, you are now big. You're now, you're, now, you're now forming. You understand the way people always say so you understand? So start by that, like that. If it's 9, p 9 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m., you know you're always online. Anybody that sends you any message after that, you know you're not going to answer. And guys, make use of tools, make use of technology. If it's for Instagram now, there are quick response like messages. Send hi to, if you send hi to Sarah Kasim in zero second, automated response from Facebook will answer you. Hello, Sheita. Thank you for joining Sarah Kasim. I'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Do you understand? So research. Check on Google. How can I make my business? What are the tools that I can use to make my life easier in fashion? What are the tools to make fashion easy for me? Do you understand? So even for customers now, see Corona now, the online connotation, calendar, connect the customers with book, the book time. Take, you to take time. You zoom or talk to the person during that time. So do you understand how easy it is? So putting structure is easy. Just make sure that you are going to hold yourself accountable to that structure. It's yourself. So it's, imagine somebody message you like 10 p.m. or 12 minutes and say I want to send you 10k now. You see the message. No man, you're not supposed to reply. But person says I'll send you 10k. They are flown from the bed and reply the person. Then tomorrow that person not sending you money. You don't know reply. The person will not say no to reply me. Meanwhile, you replied yesterday and they're giving you money. So it's you that the structure is starting from. Are you going to hold yourself accountable? Thank you. Um, Miss Alex, okay, do you want to answer the other one of um, are there opportunities to exhibition areas? arena where one can display a work for public recognition yes there are a lot of um, opportunities and um, exhibitions that where can you know like all these fashion shows wrong ways that but people generally why some people don't have these opportunities that they go there in the first place to say okay i want to go and showcase my work i want to do this but what they don't know is that they can actually go as visitors first to see how things runs there and see how they can get connected to kind of that kind of opportunity too. So they will ask about it. Okay, when is the next one coming up? You know, you get to know when the next one is coming up and they get to send the information about it. And you too, probably you'd have been prepared ahead of time and take your stuff there. So there are a lot of them like that. Even now with this Corona, this COVID-19 now, they started doing 
uh, virtual um, exhibitions that you can actually do online. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, what, what she said is great. I feel like we as millennials, you just started yesterday and automatically you're already targeting the position as somebody that's been in the industry 30 years, they're then to their day that targeting. So you have to understand patients. I understand you want to exhibit, you want to do results, but sometimes you have to serve first. So, so for example, Lagos Fashion and Design Week, their processes are very good. I said that sometimes I don't know how true, but sometimes you may be more have been in the industry for five or ten years and all those things. So if you don't know those things, you not say, oh, they not pick you, they don't do some. Me, when I started out fashion, the first thing I did when Lagos Fashion and Design Week started, I already started to be an intern. I really have to be an intern. I just got you. I got myself accustomed, accustomed to the process. Oh, I intern for April by Kumbi, Joe by Lisa, Lisa for Lawi, yo. I, read, I like so many people for the three days. Why? I wanted to see how how how, how is the fashion show like? What's the backstage process like? How do we dress up for models? How they do you understand? How do how is the finishing? When I when I intern for them, I'll check the clothes. What's inside? Why people buying their clothes? What's inside? I know it's my own. Do you understand? What's more what makes everybody come be everybody come be? Do you understand? So when you are interning for these people, when you are their, like their intern, you have access to some things, even access to them for that day or for that period. So you can even ask questions instead of stressing yourself. So it's okay if you want to, oh, maybe the fashion show. But if it's maybe you want to go and sell at an event. There are so many places, Nigeria Branchy Trade Fair. We have one Nika Trade Fair. We have so many trade fairs around even palms they used to do trade fair or zone they used to do trade fair so the thing is google see if you ask google how can i kill somebody google will tell you so do you understand ask check on google search make use of that smartphone that you bought let the phone work for you too so ask the trade fair you can even and they used to say one thing if you don't see anyone that you like you can do your own it might be expensive when i started so i did my own trade fair in my church do you understand it was free. I didn't imagine in my church. The church sponsored the event. But we brought the idea up. Oh, we have entrepreneurs here. Can we do trade fair? And we saw that we had a car park. So it's using what you have. It's not about, oh, this is not working. When the one with you, I've never used. So in my car park, we announced for like one month, we did adverts, radio jingles. On the car park, we went to the big church. We told them, every entrepreneur, you buy your table and chair, 2,000 naira. On that Saturday, we came. We would did run away. Two pictures. And that was it. So if you say that, ah, this is 50K, I don't have money. Why are you going to the tent that is 50,000 if you don't have money? It's not for you. You're not the target audience. So if it's that, start from somewhere. Don't be too. I understand that you have dreams, you have aspirations, but you have to also be careful so that you can also save. Fantastic. Those are really, really good points. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to go ahead to Miss Adejo Kela Sisi. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, depth, God, like it's very, very deep. But on a more serious note, um, Anisha Kelasis is a phenomenal person. She has been a member of Developing Africa for so long. Even during DA Summit 2018, she was one of the people who contributed to their show, Okay, We Gave to Our Speakers. She's an amazing person, and she's such such an expert in getting grants. And that is, that is why I think she's going to be a phenomenal person to tell us all about how to tips to getting funding in Nigeria and even across the board, what are the steps you need to take and things like that. So I'll hand it over to Miss Adejoke. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And um, thank you for having me on board. Um, what would I even want to say again? Um, <laughs> uh, my editor, she, she already said it all. She said everything. <laughs> but <laughs> we just try and um, probably um, share from my own little experience. So um, um, thank you for shedding light on most of the things that a majority of young people don't really understand about business. Like they just want to start, you know, like they just want to, things that they cannot achieve in 10 years, they tell you they can achieve it in one day. And if they don't meet the expectation, they, they get depressed and they feel so bad and they feel like, oh, this thing is not working for me, this thing is not for me. Whereas because they did not do it right. They are not doing it right. They, they didn't do, they, they, they are not trying to grow. They are not trying to follow process. They just want to just get there. And this life is all about process. You know, there are so many things that taught me in life that I realized, okay, everything is all about process. Like you just have to, there's, there are stages. You just have to make sure that you, you, you finish one stage before you get to another class, another class, and like that. So face by face. So, 
um, in this business, I'll just I'll just start with these um, three questions. So, which one is easier to start a business, to build a business, to sustain a business? Honestly, three of them, all the three of them, none of them is easy. You might look at it like, okay, if I just have an idea, let me just start a business. Like um, Sarah Kazim said earlier, she said, you know, all these kind of things, you need to have passion. You need to know why you are going into business. So some people don't even know the reason why they are going into business. Some people go into business because their friends are in that same field or people that they see around, they are doing well in it. You know, they, they just want to copy. They just want to copy those people because they believe that those people are making money and they too, they can make money from it. But they don't want to do the work those people are doing. They don't even want to know. They don't have the skill, required skill in that aspect. So all these kind of things. So to start a business, you need money to start a business. You need funding. To build a business, you also need money because you just have to keep having money, your cash flow. There's, there has to be money in your business to, to, to maintain that business, to rebuild that business. And to sustain a business too. That means that you must be making money. So these three, all of them to start a business, to build a business, and all of them, they all need you to have funding, money. So um, our next slide is, um, you know, what's your story? Everybody, if you have something that is actually motivating you, that motivates you to start to do what you do, it is, it is, it is very important because when you meet, when you encounter these challenges, I'm not going to say if you are encountering them because definitely you are going to encounter challenges in whatever business you find yourself in, in life. You encounter, uh, encounter some challenges. So when you face these challenges, the thing that makes you stay or, or make sure that, you, that that makes you go get through that challenge is the fact that that is, is that thing that motivates you to do what you do, to start it in the first place. The problem you are trying to solve, you know, the, the excuse me, please, they just took a light here. So the problem you are trying Sorry. to solve, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, sorry, the problem you are trying to solve, um, the people you are trying to solve the problem to, you know, people that really need those solution. So by the time you know that thing, you, you now think, because sometimes I ask myself that, why am I even in business? What am I doing in this field? But again, I will ask myself again that, I'm doing it for a specific reason. I'm doing it for some people. So that, that thing actually gives me uh, more courage and, you know, motivates me to do more than, okay, I, I think I think I need to continue to do this. So everybody. Um, sorry, Sitar. Do you mind also sharing with us? I mean, the story behind starting your show, okay, brand and starting Planet Three R. If you could share that, that would be awesome. Story for doing what, uh, my Ashoke okay business. The reason why I started Ashoke okay business was I was I was born into Ashoke okay weaving. My mom was Ashoke, okay. so I've been weaving Ashoke okay all my life. So. When I was growing up around 1990s, in the 90s, I realized that so many people always, they, they feel so much pride in wearing a show, okay, and everything. So later in, in the in early 2000, people just started wearing a show, okay, and they just stop, um, they, 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 they just, they just feel like, um, they just stop using it. So, so later I, I realized that our cultural heritage has started going into esteem, like that started declining. People don't like promoting our culture with what we wear anymore. People, people prefer to just wear, um, you know, these foreign clothes and stuff like that to promote their own economy. So I now look at it that, okay, why can't we promote and preserve this our culture with the use of our hand woven fabrics in such a way that if we can promote it very well here, and we can just, you know, export. So I ask people, I, I, I did a survey, I asked people around, okay, why are you not using Ashoke again? Majority of them told me that Ashoke is heavy and is not attractive. So we came up with an innovative solution to make sure that Ashoke is lighter and now attractive that it could be something that is something that is not just for occasion, not just for party, but something that you can use for different wears, you can use for shoes, you can use for bag. So those are the things that actually motivated me. One of the reasons why I had to start the Ashoke along the line, and I realized that, okay, I can make more impact by training people and empowering you. Uh-oh. Is it network? I think it's the network. Ms. Jacka, can you hear us? 
Okay. Um, while we wait, I think it's a network. While we wait, there was something that Sarah Kazim did not mention <laughs> that I wanted her to kind of touch on, which is the fact of you know solving a problem. Like when you when you're starting a business or starting your fashion industry, for example, you want to make sure that your 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 customers are excited. So why what problem is Sarah Kazim solving? For example, you know your your customers go to a, to a party, they go for an O and B, they are dancing, they are happy. They don't want to go go to O and B and be feeling uncomfortable. They are going to go to T A, right? Things like that. So identify a problem. Okay, she's leaving. I think she's going to join back. Identify a problem and see how it I really love that. I wish you said it. I wish you said it when when you started. But yeah, that that was a really interesting thing. And also, uh, Miss Jacke. While I wait for her, um, if you see all of these pictures that are here, these are things that she made with with pure water sachet, which I think is like really amazing. She makes all of this designs and creative stuff with. Anyway, let's give it a few minutes. Hi Rita, hi Chiyore. Do you guys want to introduce yourself to us? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, but we see that you've just joined us, so we would like you. So we'll let you introduce yourself. Hi. Hi. <laughs> where are you? Why are you calling? No, you're not calling. <laughs> so I'm glad with radio presenting. Where are you dialing in from? Tell us about your fashion. I don't know. Tell us. Just talk to us. We are here to listen. <laughs> okay. So, hello, I'm Rita Etuk. I'm calling from, okay, not calling, Ja. Um, well, from Nigeria, Lagos, to be precise. <laughs> and I was interested in this um, webinar because I'm about to start a fashion business that focuses on just skirts. <laughs> And I just really needed to gather uh, and listen and learn. Awesome. You know, Sarah Cousin was just talking about skirts a few, like during our presentation. Anyway, don't worry, I'm going to have this recording on our on the website so you can always go back and listen when but it's good to have you. Thank you for joining. Yay, thank you. All right, so let's go back to um Miss Jacque. Let's see. So we say have a story. All right. Sorry, you may go ahead. I know there was a network challenge there. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry for that uh, break in transmission. Um, so as I was saying, I, I, I know that, okay, my weaving skill is a, I use it as a tool for a positive change, you know, as an expression. I use it to, for, for in, in my community. So what did I do? My quest to, to really make more impact in the community, I realized that so many people, in the community have, um, um, they just dump um, clothes, nylon, pure water shachets. They just dump it on the, they dump it on the street in the drainage. And these things are causing environmental um, issues in our community, you know, whereby it just block the drainage, flood up and down. So, and I thought, okay, what can I use? What can I do? There's a skill that I have. How can I use my skill to make more impact in the community? And that was where we started weaving all these pure water shachets, nylon, jeans, and different fabrics like that. As you can see on the on the screen, the bag that I just that on the screen is actually made of pure water shachets. So there are so many things that um that that was one of the reasons, one of the things that inspired me anyways to start that planet VR. Yeah. Yeah, you may continue with using your story to get grants. Yes, 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 yes. It's actually, okay, like this planet three hours now. I just started in um, January. I used it to apply for a grant in March and I've been shortlisted as one of the 10 finalists, which will start our boot camp. And, you know, then maybe by God's grace, I win the award. So the next slide, please learn how to tell your story very well. No, don't, don't tell like me like myself. So in terms of <laughs> the types of opportunities and programs that we have, um, you know, when people hear of funding, people always think, ah, funding, 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 funding is money, money, okay. 
So funding could be in terms of grants, loan. So it doesn't have to be um, grants, grants. It could be loan because funding is just that, okay, you need money for that business. You need money for that project. So even your friends and family can give you money. They can actually fund your project if they see that, okay, it's a very good one and something that can um, help the community or the society as a whole. So you just have to understand that techniques. So I tell people to that. If you go for programs like that, it doesn't have to be about funding. It doesn't just have to be about funding. You can get your mentors from there. And mentorship is not someone that you can just say, hello, I want you to be my mentor. Because I see so many people like that, that just come to me and say, please, I would like you to be my mentor. I just look at them like this. This is not how it works. Like, you just have to, like, one minute, you, have, you have to develop a relationship and make sure that, okay, you know, is that person that will even be chasing after you to help you when they see that, okay, you post something. Oh, how can I be of help? Okay, because they see that, okay, you are doing, you, you actually, you are pushing yourself. And they see that, okay, if, if they actually support you, it can help. It's not just about you now. It can help the society, to help the community. And they'll be happy to be part of the success, part of your success story. So it's not just something that you just go to people and just say, can you be my mentor? So all these kind of things, make sure that you build relationship over time, yeah. all these organizations. So, <laughs> sorry. That's my son. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> go ahead. Hello. Hope you can hear me. Yes, no? yes we can uh, hear yes. you. Okay. So, we have business trainings. All these business trainings are actually one of the things that helped me. Mentorship, I have, I've got, I have a lot of people that are willing to support and, and you know, um, put me through. And to be honest, I don't take it for granted because I realize that time is very precious. For them to give their, their time to me, you know, I, I ask them questions. Even sometimes, anytime, I just send them questions that, please, these things, I'm okay, or just, I, I may just need your feedback. Please, can I get your feedback on this um, sample that I just made? And these are the things because over the time we've built relationship and they just, they just reply my messages. Even sometimes I know that, okay, the time is not really convenient for them, but I've already built this kind of relationship with them. And those are the kind of things that have helped me over the time to win some of these grants that people feel like, okay, uh, she just, she just won grants. So all these things are not really overnight. So please, uh, no, no, let's go back to the last, let's, last grant. This last, last slide. Okay, so business trainees, please go for training and make sure that you learn more about businesses, know how to structure your business fellowships, residency, exhibitions and shows. I think um, Sarah has already talked about that. If you, and a lot of opportunities like that, that when you go for them, you might get this funding opportunity from them. Next slide, let's get, back, let's get to the next slide. So the next slide, we have different grant applications. We have written applications. Most of the grants are usually written applications. So they want to get to know you, make sure that you write very well in such a way that when they are reading your application, they already, they already, there's a way they're already feeling as in like looking forward that they can't just wait to meet the person behind the idea because you are not at that place your application speaks for you it's your application that speaks for you wherever your application gets to so we have video pitch application to me i like video pitch application more because here you can express uh, a lot of things about yourself or uh, speaking showing where you um, carry out your activities showing products you know samples of your products in your video so this one too is very very good and just make sure that you stay on the if they ask you one for one minute just do that one minute don't exceed the time please so we have pitch deck pitch deck could be in form of um our slides you know this slide presentation powerpoint so where you just have your pitch deck that your pitch deck if they read it they need to, it, it, they, they, they understand what you do without seeing you. When they go through your pitch deck, they understand everything that you do. Then we have the demo pitching. This demo pitching, I've experienced it a um, few times. Like the last one I went for in Abuja, um, 32 of us were selected to come for um, pitching in Abuja. So when we got there at International Conference Center in Abuja, they, um, they, they are some, there were some judges inside. So they call us inside one by one to come and do our live uh, demo pitching. So we just talked about, um, our, they gave us five minutes 
to talk about our um our business idea and you know they asked us a few questions and after that 16 of us were selected so after selecting us they now say that the system will now go for live pitching pitching where we now pitch to a large number of audience to over 3000 youths in the um in the hall in the, at the international conference center so all these kind of things you just have to understand how it works for you to so that it doesn't just you don't just um get um confused and you don't know what to do so what are the grant givers looking for they want to know if your idea is disruptive what do you mean by disruptive ideas that are not that, that are not normal that people see as crazy ideas things that people see as you know few centuries ago some people came up with sometimes scientists and some people came up with some ideas and other then people saw it as crazy ideas but now it's normal because everybody now do it so if you now come up with an idea that you know people now see as crazy believe me people will get people will still adjust it might just take time but because you created that idea you came up with that that kind of solution it to really help you in securing a lot of funding and even making a whole lot of money in your business then the next one is if your idea is original what do i mean by original like um sarah um like sarah kazim said you know some of the work that she did is her own idea so that when you are creating your own idea make sure that it's your own if it's not your own give credit to the owner of the of the probably the person that actually owns the idea you might just say okay i'm the tailor i saw this clothes but the designer the designer of this um uh, of the dress is also so something so all these kind of things are very important for us to do so if your idea solves problem i think uh, i believe that sarah kazim has already said talked about this thing that your idea must be solving a particular problem like um the example that she mentioned for someone that asked question that can she make it in london part of the country in nigeria especially kano that you have to make sure that you do what your audience needs like sewing kaftan and stuff like that for the Aousa people because you might even be sewing hijab for them because that's part of the addressing too so you know you're just solving a particular problem so is your idea is it scalable you know they want to know if your idea if it's not just about if it's not just going to end your community they want to know if it can extend into probably your state um, a, a global a global solution so they want to know those are the things that they are looking for so they want to know if your idea aligns with their vision if their vision is to empower youth and women and you 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 are into empowerment too honestly you are you you have a probably 95% chance of getting that chance of getting that grant unlike someone that doesn't even have anything to do with empowerment so make sure that you go to their website and look at what they are looking for so the other one is is your idea is it going to benefit others they want to know if it if you get the grant is it only going to be about you? Are you going to employ people? You know, they want to see that, okay, it's not just going to be about you now. You want to create, they want to see if you are going to create opportunities from what they are giving out. So those are the things that they are looking for. So now let's get to the next grant and see what you have to do to yourself to get this grant. So what you should look out for when applying, you have to look out for their goals and objectives. Like I said earlier, go to their websites. Don't, 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 don't be, don't be, um, um, lazy because honestly majority of us are lazy in putting all we have done in paper you know going through this application reading through their website their goals and objectives let us make sure that we know that it helps a lot there was this application like that that i applied for in 2015 and that was my first time of of um flying outside you know as of get, going to the airport in my life and ever being inside plane free everything you know all expense paid. So that 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 stuff, I just saw the website. I, I saw the program. I saw the opportunity online. So I was like, okay, yearly program. So when I saw yearly program online, I was like, ah, this program is eh? President Obama's program. Let me try and check it out. I went to their website. I look at their objectives. What they want to try to do is that they want to try and give technological solution and entrepreneurship and business knowledge to individuals you know business owners so i was like ah, these are the things that i need now what are we now looking for so in my own application do you know what i said when they asked me that why do i want to be a part of that program i told them that i would i would love to be a part of the program because 
I want to have, you know, enough as, access to entrepreneurship. Um, I want to have access to entrepreneurship um, studies and, and have access to uh, be able to do a very well accountability of my business and have technological solution that will help reshape my business. You know, stating all those things actually is something that those are the things that they want to give to us. And those are the things that I stated in my application. You know, now it's not that I'm lying, but I make sure that it suits what they what has been written on their own um, website. So other things that they will look out for that you should look out for is look out for the sectors they wish to invest in. If you are into agriculture and they want to invest in fashion, it doesn't make sense for you to apply for that kind of um, 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 project or kind of kind of uh, um, grants. They will not give it to you. It's different. You cannot be in, um, you know, fashion is all that creative, this thing, and you, you are in agriculture, you're not be tightly nervous about how you want to plant uh, this crop or stuff. You know, it doesn't just align. These people just want to invest in fashion sector. That is it. So just make sure that you read through everything before you now waste your time and write and write. At the end of the day, you now realize that you've wasted your time on things that doesn't really um, concerns you or that you are not eligible for. So the next thing is make sure you watch the video and read the stories of the past winners. You know, most of all these videos that are put on their websites are mostly videos that are connected to YouTube. So most of those are like, I know YouTube, I don't want to watch videos on YouTube. It takes away my data. It wastes data, it does it. So these things then, eh, do just look at that. Look at the opportunities. Look at the advantage, not the disadvantage. Look at what you will gain from them. It helps you in narrowing on how to write uh, the kind of people they are looking for when you watch the videos of the past winners, it helps a lot. So what do I mean by eligibility? Eligibility, the man said, okay, they want to give it to only women. If you're a man, don't even bother applying for it. They want to give it to people be, be between age 18 and 30. If you're above 30, don't even bother applying for it. So these are the things that you need to look out for when you're applying for grants. So make sure that, let us have this at the back of your mind so that you don't just waste your time. Thank you for, <laughs> for listening and let's stay connected. If you Thank have any you so much. Go ahead. Sorry. You're welcome. All right. So let's take some more questions. Um, and either of you, either Sarah Kazim or Ms. Adeja can answer this. What's the future of African ready to wear brands? I will leave that to uh, Sarah Kazim. <laughs> okay so like i always say i'm always very skeptical about answering questions like this because number one i'm not god so i can't say what's the future but i can just give insights with the data that people have been seeing and because of the way the coronavirus and all the things that this pandemic has taught us it has taught us that everything can happen online and when I mean everything, I'm not like saying, okay, 100%, but I'm saying 90%. A lot of times then you hear people say, oh, I can't work from home. I have to be at work and blah, blah, blah. When Corona happened, Nigerians, employers working from home, I can't believe it. So you understand, so for fashion, I think that the future is sustainability. So if you're anything that you're trying to do right now, you should be thinking about the environment. What are the impacts of these things that I'm doing, either in the fabric making, how you treat your staff, how you treat the environment, um, the production process, the finishing, whatever, anything that you're doing, make sure that you are putting in consciousness, sustainability, you are trying to put sustainability inside your consciousness, and then technology, whatever it is that you are doing, make sure that you are moving into digital era. That, by the way, I told you, you don't want to get left behind. See, like I was read last week, I was reading um, this um, Wall, um, Wall Street Journal article about Kodak and film. One is alive and the other one is dead because one didn't adapt quickly into digital taking pictures and all those things. So you understand? So guys, what you need to start doing now is reading, researching, what's the future of fashion post corona? Nobody knows it, but at least people from different parts, with like different, different things, people be, you can always, always connect it together. It might not be what's going to happen, but at least you will not be caught on our ways. You're not going to just be shocked and be like, wow, 
what's happening. So as anything you're doing now, make sure that you're learning how to use technology tools. Make sure you're learning to put your fashion out there. Making sure that your your process are, are easy. Now we've learned that people are now, people are chill. They don't want to stress. So whatever you're doing, I don't want to come to the now. We don't know whether after this, people want to go to this theater to watch a movie. We don't know. People are just going to be speculating. They are not the final say. Whatever it is, you can never know. At the end of the day, it's still going to end at what's the buyer saying? What's the audience saying? They're going to be the one to decide whatever is going to happen. So right now, make sure whatever you're doing with your brand is so about sustainability, technology, ease of doing business, relaxation, whatever it is that is going to happen with fashion brand. I think that's going to be centered around all those things. And see now, see my tailors, they've been working from, from, working from home. It just occurred to me when pandemic happened. Just occurred to me that every fashion designer, at least ninety percent of fashion designers, have, have their own machines at home. And I'm like, wow! I was shocked. Like, ah! And we'll be stressing ourselves. So work from home. Maybe you meet once a week and oh, bring the clothes, take the one that you take back home. And like that, do you understand? Small, small people start getting used to this. So whatever you're doing is centered around technology and sustainability. Fantastic. Um, let's look at the other question. Are there groups or platforms that offer scholarship and updates on fashion for starters? Yeah, like I always say, guys, I feel like as our generation, millennials, generation Z, we have these smartphones, but we're not actually making use. Like I said the last time, if you ask Google, I want to kill somebody, it will tell you. I want to be fat. It not see. There's nothing that is there. I want to breathe well. I want to style my hair. It will sh I'm telling you, like, and it's ridiculous. There are all these things. Like, really, there are scholarship, master scholarship for fashion. When you, um, um, what's the name? There's International Fashion Academy. Like, so many, many of these options. The only thing is that most of the times, there are always restrictions because of the number. So you might have to keep trying, make sure your application is standing out, make sure whatever it is that you are doing. Do you understand? So there might be restriction, actually, oh, application fee, restriction with maybe high LTS, all those things that you have to do. But if you know you want to do scholarship or you want to do something, you know that, oh, check the prerequisites on the website. What are they looking for? What are they asking for? What document they need? What forms do they need? Make sure that at least, even if it's September, by now, all these things are ready for you to take IELTS, take it. And sometimes we don't even know that sometimes we don't even take these things as long as you're, whatever your university or whatever country um, institution that you went to school is like the, the medium for speak language is English. People don't know these things. So make sure that you're asking and you know, and then you can Google online courses. You just, I said, you can take crash course in entrepreneurship. You can start from somewhere, maybe learn from somewhere very close to you. When you learn from the roadside person, you start moving, you take online courses. You And as I always say, is you don't always have to have, have access to these people. So from, there was one time, there's a story when I, in 2018, I always had issue with fixing zips on my hand here. I'll be, I'll be like, ah, why is this thing fitted? But me, I can't make it fit there. What's the issue? So one day I was checking Instagram and one of the models now shake that, like moved. That's when I saw, I saw that there was a zip here. So I said, there's a short zip that people put here. They can zip and open for the sleeve so that it's fitted. I know that my own was not always fitted because I was always watching this person. That's how I saw the person. Like, oh, this is the trick and the hack. So a lot of times I always used to, I need to farm this person. This person must know me. This person must be my mentor. Like Mr. Um, Adjokes okay, said, this person must be my mentor. Meanwhile, these people, they have books. They have online courses. They have articles that you can read. They don't even have to know you before you can do. So there are all these things. Just search, ask questions, check on Google, check online, ask for fashion schools. And that's to say that you have to be careful so that it's not only fashion processes you are learning. You have to also understand that this is a business. If you are trying to make it a business, learn how to build businesses, entrepreneurship, learn how to build structures, learn how to build things around this that is not only centered around, oh, you're a good tailor, but you're a bad business person. Because at the end of the day, that your good tailor is not going to save you. If not, what you keep doing is you'll be walking like an elephant, eating like an ant, because you'll always be amassing jobs without finding tools that will make your life easier, your process seamless. You'll just be working, you'll be tired, you'll be exhausted, you'll be procrastinating, you don't know why. So just research, Google, check, ask questions. People you like, ask them, what fashion schools can you recommend? I can't recommend anyone because I'm not going to anyone outside Nigeria. The only way I can recommend is be small fashion school where I learned, and I always talk about it a lot. So do you understand? Ask questions, research, research. you definitely find something. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I can't hear. We can't hear you, Mr. Can I say something, can I say something yes. about that? Can you? 
Yes, please. Okay, um, there are some scholarships that um, British Council do, do give on fashion. And uh, there was this time like that, there's this um, Canada, Toronto fashion school, they came to Nigeria. You know, people don't, um, like she said, that you can just search for in Google, on Google to get information. So honestly, sometimes I wonder what some, what some people do with their smartphones. They are not just smart with the smartphones. So um, I saw there, there was this fashion opportunity that I saw online. And that's why I said that your relationship with people matters a lot. So I told them um, like a big uh, or gas slash mentor about it. I was like, okay, would you like to go for it? And that thing was not free, but you know that it paid for me on my behalf. So there's so many things that you just get the opportunity to learn. So honestly, sometimes it's not just, it's not just about money. When people just say it's money, I don't have money. It has to be free, it has to be scholarship. Why don't you get the opportunity first and let people that are around you see the reason why you need to be there. Honestly, you will get it, they will pay for you. So there are a lot of training out there, a lot of opportunity on, um, on what's it called, um, you know do's, you know do.com. So you get a lot of fashion opportunities on there too. So there are so many places that you can get this fashion opportunity from, in Nigeria and online and stuff like that. Thank you. Do you mind putting that website, you know, do on in the chat window so that I can get it and put it in the slide as well. Um, another question is how to put, how do you put price on your time as, uh, how do you put time, price on your time as a fashion entrepreneur? Okay, so how you put price on your time is now left to you. What I always say, what I always say about putting price on time is what I always say about putting. Sorry, can you excuse me? Like, sorry. Okay. Um, let me just continue. Okay. Um, so put putting price on your time as what you do. Like, um, I can't I can't really say for you know different people have um the way that they plan their time and value their time. But one thing that I always say that the number of time that you use in doing that work, you need to calculate that time that you, you not calculate based on rent, based on uh, the food that you eat, based on, um, you know, everything that, that involves in, in producing that thing. Not just because most of us, we don't really calculate our time. We calculate only the direct cost, just the things that we use to buy. Probably you buy zip, you buy material, and you just calculate the thread that you use in sewing it. You don't calculate the, the, the days, the, the months that it took you in finishing that job. Even by thinking about that, um, sketching it, everything is still part of it. Some people don't calculate sketching that design. They just calculate the time that is being spent on sewing it. So you have to be the one, you know, different times that you spend on your own clothes, uh, different uh, designs. What do I do? Me, I calculate all the thread direct costs and I calculate. I make sure that what I usually do is that if I calculate the, the number of what I do in uh, doing it, I make sure that I times it times three. That's majority most of the price. So that the direct cost is one. Indirect costs, which are the um, other costs, you know, like um, electricity bill, rent bill, everything is the other one. Why the other one is my profit, you know, one third. So that's where I usually do my own. Okay, so I'll continue from where she stopped. So putting a price on time, I don't know if the person is a freelance person. So I don't, I really don't know what that question is, if the person is a freelance person. But I'll be coming on the angle of freelance and not an entrepreneur right now because the person is saying how to put a price on your time as what I do is on time. So if you're a freelance person, what I always say is when you start out in your industry, ask yourself, because when you start out, you're trying to get visibility, right? You're trying to make people know you. So how do you get visibility? By putting yourself there. And when you're starting, if you don't have, like, if you don't have portfolios, if you don't have all these things, you might not be like, oh, you know how to do the job. So you have to do a job so that people can say, oh, this is what you have done. I'll give you the job. So how do you do that? You can tell, so tell yourself, oh, for the next one year, I'm going to be working for free. I'm going to be volunteering. I'm going to be, I'll be a mentee. and just putting myself there. So that that way you're building, you can be six months, three months, one year. You say, oh, throughout this year, I'm going to be building my portfolio, 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 portfolio. And after the year, you can sit down and say, okay, now that I've built the portfolio, that I already have what I'm doing, 
now I have to place a price on myself. So placing your price on yourself is according to what Mr. Kess said, your direct cost, what is your, what's your range, how you know how you're going to be dividing that, that you have to now research and ask questions, go to Google, check all those things, because it's, it's, it's way broader than what you think it is. Then you ask yourself, what I always advise, especially freelance is, if you are looking at maybe, for example, buying a laptop, you ask yourself, how many jobs do I need to do to buy a laptop? So there are different ways to get one million naira. You can say, oh, I want to get one naira from one million people. Happy birthday to you. I want to get hundred. I want to get hundred naira from hundred thousand people. Happy birthday to you. I want to get one thousand from one thousand people. Happy birthday to you. I want to get ten thousand hundred people. Whatever it is, somebody will say one person is the person that pay me one million naira. So whatever it is, that will come to understanding your target audience. So if your target, your, your target audience is someone that's in the lab, you want to collect one million from only a ha, you will sleep there. Oh. But if your target audience is someone that is going to a co-hotel, always private jet and this thing, one million is not a big deal for that person. Do you understand? Know, if person is lying, if person is not lying or, or fonting. Do you understand? Know, so it still boils down to understanding your target audience. So read up on that. Then understand the target audience so that you can see, oh, this is, if I'm charging 100,000, even if the person asking me for a discount, I cannot go way below 80,000 Naira. And even in that 80,000 Naira, if they structure your business, you send this person an invoice, you send an invoice of 100K, then in the invoice you put, I gave you a discount of 10%. So that the person know, and they don't think that your money is 90,000 Naira, meanwhile it's 100K. So when they tell other people, they will tell them that ah, it's 100K that I just you know, but she gave me a discount. So even the person are coming to do this discount, you say, ah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not giving you that discount anymore. I gave you that time because new person, I'm just starting out. And the more you build your traction, the more you build your portfolio, the more you'll be able to place value on your time. See somebody like your last say go now. Ah, we're not the same. It's not for you. Like you understand. <laughs> like yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm yes, sir. But I'm just trying to tell you. So the other go on our website, I think on our website, reading, oh, for consultation, she collects 80K or 100K. I can't really know, say the exact figure. But for consultation yeah. per hour, yeah. she charges about 100,000 Naira. Do you understand? I read it on our website. Someone like me, I don't even charge for consultation. So somebody else can come and say, ah, I can't waste my time and not charge consultation because, ah, uh -uh, after you read, you don't say that you are not now. You are not going to, you know, you're not, you're not end up so in the good. I'm not wasting my time. So what may I do? I don't go through that process with my clients. There's somebody that is designated for that. If you want to talk about the style, be kids. There's somebody there. That's her job that she does. So that way, I'm not going to sit down with you and be talking. At the end of the day, you will now walk away. I'm not going to sew. So the person that is there, that's what she does. So just sit down, read about it, ask questions, and you will be able to place value on your time. Awesome, sus. Um, let's see. What other question? Let's do does the company and this is for grants. How easy is it applying for grants or funding? Does the company keep close monitoring and training after this disbursement of funds? Uh okay. Uh, should I answer that? Yes. <laughs> and most of these companies, some of them, if they actually keep close monitoring and training, it is it is very, very good. It's, it's for your own sake. It helps you a lot, especially if you are if you are someone that 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 don't have that don't discipline yourself in spending money. I've seen some people that have received grants because they don't have to return it. They, they, they use it to buy iPhone. They use it to buy cars. They just spend it on something that is not related to what was actually written in their budget. So they, if 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 actually if some companies don't keep um track because there too, they just it's just especially if you were to be like government um stuff, you know. Sometimes the uh, government doesn't really keep track on on the money and stuff like that. Especially once you they, they keep track after the first disbursement. But once you collect everything like that, most of the time they don't they don't ask again. Once you collect the second second tranche, they don't ask again. So there are so many um companies like that that they ask for all these things. And if you know that they ask. You know, it's actually helps some people in in getting in doing what is right and not spend the money on their girlfriends and stuff, stuff like that. So, <laughs> so it's 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 uh, some companies do that. Why some don't do that? They don't keep close monitoring. Thank you. Um, another question. I'm a shy and non-social person. How can I make online sales and convince people to buy from me? I have poor marketing skills. Okay, so with that question, eh, like I always say, I feel like there's 
so many things that can be learned. Do you understand? I feel like there's so many. So we have hard skills and we have soft skill. That's an hard skill. You can learn that. I always tell people when I'm trying to look for a new team member or a teammate, I look out for soft skill. You know, I look out for hard skill. I know that hard skill is something that the person can definitely learn. You can learn how to market. It still boils down to going on Google, Instagram. There are people that their major job is coaching, teaching you how to market. Some people can collect a pen from me. They will market it back to me and I'll buy that pen from them. Forget that the pen in the beginning was my own. I forgot it. But because of the way they are so good with words, they are so good with psychology and everything, everything, they market it back to me and I forgot it. So there are so many handles to follow. You can follow Trisha Bees, you can follow Niger Branchy. So many, so many handles. Check them, Stephanie No B. There are so many people that you can follow. Um, what's this guy's name? I've forgotten his name. What's in his name? Um, but he calls himself number one coach. I forgot. A four. Is it Paula? Four, four. I forgot to do. Okay. So there's so many people. So yes. So if you are looking for how to market your business and how to get people to buy from you, you don't even have to be the one. Me, because I'm a very, very energetic person. I like to be out there. That's why it's easier for me to be able to market Sarah Kasim because I breathe, I eat. My real name is Sarah Kasim. Do you understand? So everything is in me. So if it's you, something that you are not passionate, you don't, you don't know how to do. You can look for one of your friends. I have a friend, Odera. If Odera wears my clothes and I post that picture, best believe that five people want to sew that dress. And why? Because she has a great body. And people forget that. They would have ordered the dress when they now come for fitting. You have already advised them when they come for fitting. They say, ah, it not come with her body. And I'm like, Odera has a banging body. So because of that body, any dress that she wears fits. Like automatic so that kind of person that for them, I tell me I want to make I'm be calling her. But then I show you don't have wedding. But then I show you don't have to go somewhere. But then I show you don't want to wear new clothes. Do you understand? Because I've already seen that there's something about her and her body that people are always attracted to. And I want that to always be on my dress. So everybody needs to her. So that's easy. I hope my dress for you, Sarah Kasim. So do you understand? So if it's that, look for a friend that likes to talk, energetic, always go to wedding. I'm not saying that she sold the dresses for the person free. You can do 50%. You say, ah, you know that time you wear my dress. People, you can even do affiliate marketing. Ah, when you with customer, anybody come for me and they say, they, and you, so you have to be honest because there's sometimes that the person will not know that this person came from there. You can say, oh, every time you bring somebody, 1K for you. If person bring 10 people, that's 10K. You see, that's an incentive for me. So now I want to be saying, ah, buy from Sarah Casimo, buy from Sarah Casimo, buy, because it's something, if I bring 10 people, 10K, chilling 10K, that I'm not stressed for. Do you understand? So don't look for any of your friends that maybe likes to go to party, that likes partying, that likes going out, and all those things. And try to make that person wear your clothes from time to time. And if it's that, you can reach out to people that you like. The mistake about reaching out to people is that sometimes, someone like me now, I want to make a dress. I will not go and be messaging Toke Makinwa. How now? Nah? You say that there are no designers that are looking for somebody who wants to wear their dress. Me, I'm somebody that I like to grow step by step. I don't when I'm going down a staircase. I don't fly or jump. I climb these stairs because I don't want to fall down or stumble. Do you understand? So that's the thing. If you're just starting out, why are you shooting for Tokema Kinwa? I don't understand where you're flying to. Only if she's your sister, though. There's so many people around you, your friends, they are working in offices. Like that, you always, you know, this person is someone that is bubbly. People take pictures, people are always liking the picture. Then that a dress. You have a blogger you like that is growing, send that a dress. You have a sister that works somewhere, send that a dress. When you are starting out, always remember that, yes, you want to make money, you want to make profit, but you also have to know that you have to be so you have to be sustainable. You have to always keep building your business. So when you're starting out, you might lose money, but you're using that money to bring in more money. Somebody asked me a question when I launched the Rakasim NG in March. People are like, oh, they're doing giveaway for 44 days. And I'm like, if you know me, you will know that I'm doing giveaway, but I'm not doing giveaway. To know me is to know that I'm doing giveaway, but I'm not doing giveaway. I'm not doing, I'm doing giveaway, and the giveaway was simple. I'm not telling you to post picture on your page. No, all those things will stress people. They will not pay, partake, only if you're giving them one million. What do I do? Post this thing on your story. Because I've noticed that people always watch story more than they go to the feed. Post on your story, tag me. Person with the, when we do the, the rolling thing, if you win, you get it. See now, when we see now, when you, when the person gets this clothes, this person is going, to, 44 different people 
are wearing free Seraka syndrome. What's going to happen to them? They'll be excited when they wear it. They'll be like, oh, thank you so much. They put on their page, oh, thank you. I really like the dress. When they go out, people see them and say, ah, this dress is very beautiful. They say, ah, Seraka syndrome made this. Oh, ah, and it was, ah, I want it as a giveaway. The excitement is different. So I would rather have 40, I would rather have 40 people wearing the dress free. I'll make the money from somewhere else than tying it down and say, oh, no, somebody must pay. And the dress is just there doing nothing. So the difference is just the same thing as saying, I'd rather have 50% of 1 billion naira than have 100% of 100 million naira. No, I don't want that. So do you understand? It's just making sure that you look for the people that are aligning with your, your market, your values, what you do, and you guys should just join forces. Thank you very much. Okay, um, maybe two more questions. Mr. Oh, oh, yes, please. please. Yes. Um, like what she said about um, I re I really really agree with what she said about people trying to get all these big celebrity to wear their clothes first and everything. And at the end of the day, you just now realize that you know they they this they, their own customers are not your competitors. Some of us don't know our competitors. When when you have some people who are their competitors, they keep uh, staying saying Nike, Adidas from wrong way. You are not even, they, they don't even they don't know that you exist. So they, they are not your competitors. You are not their competitors. They don't know you. So you make sure that you are in competition with with um with people that you people that are in your whole level, people that you can actually um that you have probably the same market, the same audience. So but so people don't understand. Why would I want to give Dokawa Maki one my clothes when probably she was wearing one designer um, from US, from UK? They cannot even compete with. So there are some things that like that some, some of us don't really understand. Until we understand our competitors, some of us might not really know our audience market. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Um, I'll just do one more question and then we can call it a day. So I guess how to how to source for machineries to do fashion business? What how do you source for machineries to do fashion to do a, start a fashion business? We okay, have... so for machine... yeah, for so for sourcing for machinery, at the end of the day, I always ask, what's your budget? What's your budget like? So I, I say, if you don't have money right now, there are services in Lagos, Nigeria. Check on Instagram. What they do, they opened like a hub. They call them like Taylor Hub or something. You just come in every day, pay maybe one thousand naira or two thousand naira. They have the machines, light, nepa iron everything you need to do just carry yourself there and the customer clothes so i think it's from um, 8 a.m to 6 p.m every day so so you can save up and buy your own and i should say if you don't have money for brand new you can buy fairly used do you understand so just small 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 so for machineries there are so many of them in eco i can give you like a detail, detailed number of somebody who sells and has been trusted since 2017 that i started that's who I, I get my machines from. So it's just easy. Just understand how financially buoyant are you so that you don't put pressure on yourself and then you buy machine. You cannot now have money to buy fabric. You don't have money to do marketing. You don't have money to do sponsored hard. You don't have money to do anything. You have all your money to buy machine. Do you understand? Who put yourself under unnecessary pressure? There's always a way, really, to be honest. There's always a way. It's just left to you to sit down. You can sit down with your friends that you trust, your sister, someone in the industry you trust, and bounce off ideas of this person. Ask questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah Kazim and Adi Joker Lassisi. I really, really do appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate your knowledge, your insights, and the energy that you brought. Thank you so much. Thank you also to everyone who joined in. Really appreciate your time. Um, we're going to go ahead and share this recording on the website so it's av available for everybody to watch after the session. Um, we'll also share the slides, the emails of everyone who registered so you will get this as well. But thank you so much. Stay connected. Follow us on so social media and we will follow you back. When you tag anything, put the official hashtags like we shared before and we would repost it. But thank you so much. We're going to stop recording now. Thank you. Uh, stop recording. Stop.